Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? Brian, in one word, I am Derby-licious. Matt, I am legitimately scared right now, but nothing will stop the show, Matt. First thing we want to do, we pretty much know the field of 20 now for the Kentucky Derby. So let's introduce that field one at a time. We're going to talk top contenders, board hitters, or horses. We are simply going to take a pass on, Matt. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's go 20. 20 deep, and we're going to start in points, uh, points earned order, Matt. That leaves essential quality. Why not at the top? The undefeated champion, the son of Tappet out of the Brad Cox barn, Matt. <laughs> He is the horse to beat in this Kentucky Derby. He has to be with his record. But on the other hand, I don't think he's scared anyone away. I agree with that, Brian. And he checks all of the tradition, all of the recent boxes of Kentucky Derby winners that need to be checked. He's won a hundred point race. He is undefeated as a three-year-old and he races close to the pace. Yeah, or it can come a little farther off if this fast pace that we see possibly happening in the Kentucky Derby happens, Matt. So he's versatile. He finishes well. Tappet has never sired a Kentucky Derby winner, Matt. Brad Cox has never trained a Kentucky Derby winner. And maybe most importantly of all, Godolphin has never had the powerhouse stable from overseas, has never yet won the Kentucky Derby. Is this the horse? He's a top contender for me, but I don't know if he's my number one. I agree with that, Brian. I don't see how you cannot call him a top contender, but there are a number of things that have me uh, 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 not ultra confident about essential quality. Yeah, still a top contender for both of us. Let's move on, Matt. Hot Rod Charlie is definitely one of my favorites. Son of Oxbow, a Preakness winner. He's trained by Doug O'Neill, who's won two of the last 10 derbies or so, Matt. They pick up Flavia and Prado, who rode the horse once before. I think Hot Rod Charlie's in with a shot. I agree. Impressive front running victory in the Louisiana Derby, going a mile and three sixteenths. So he's got a win going farther than any other horse in this field. Doug O'Neill, a trainer who loves to take shots at big races all over the country, is much more selective in the Derby. He's got a fantastic two wins in six starts record in the run for the Roses. That's right. On the other hand, the Louisiana Derby has failed to produce a Kentucky Derby winner, Matt, in a quarter century. You remember that was Grindstone getting up late over Cavanier back in the 1996 Kentucky Derby. That doesn't bother me. So that, that's a trend. But I think this year's Louisiana Derby was good. For me, Hot Rod Charlie is a top contender top contender for me also brian well surely we're gonna like the arkansas derby winner matt then that's super stock a son of dialed in he was uh pretty heavy in stakes experience without breaking through until he rallied impressively down the stretch at oakland park to win the one million dollar arkansas derby yes brian and we talked about it i think last week we in, in our recap section uh super stock got a great trip in that race uh ground saving early on got the perfect setup with speed out front um swung outside coming down the stretch and and uh picked up the pieces brian the kentucky derby is going to be way tougher than that six horse field in the arkansas derby yeah, I have to agree with you there, Matt. A mile and a quarter with 20 horses. I'm just not on Super Stock's bandwagon, Matt. I'm not on the bandwagon of the Arkansas Derby as a whole. I think the best horse from the Arkansas Derby is not running in the Kentucky Derby for some reason. I'm going to take a pass on Super Stock. I just don't think this is his spot. It's a feel-good story, this horse, for the Aspison family, but I have to take a pass also. Yeah, speaking of take a pass, Matt, let's talk like the king and I just want to get on my soapbox a little bit. Why the heck is the, uh, is the uh, stakes race at Turfway Park a hundred pointer, Matt? Obviously, I know the answer. Churchill Downs now owns Turfway Park, but I really don't see like the king, uh, low buyers, Wesley Ward trained horse as a viable, viable Kentucky Derby contender. 
I agree with you there also, Brian. I'm going to take a pass on Like the King. And I found it interesting as I was researching the, the Derby field for various uh, stories on Horse Racing Nation. This is Wesley Ward's first Kentucky Derby starter. Yeah, well, he's better known for sprints on the turf, although he is a very good trainer uh, who's done other things as well, of course. I should like this horse, the son of Palace Malice, who you know I liked a lot. I don't think like the King fits in on a class standpoint in this year's Derby. I do think, though, that known agenda fits in on a class standpoint, Matt. The son of Curlin finally broke through with his initial stakes win, and it came at the right time in a big floor Derby win. It sure did. Uh, patient Pletcher is uh, what we're going to start calling him. He's been so patient with his three-year-olds, letting them mature, uh, not necessarily looking for precoc precocious victories. Known agenda is coming into his own, got breeding to go 10 fur furlongs. For sure, a top contender for me and maybe my top choice in the race. Yeah, he's right up there for me too, Matt. I am a little worried that he's not quite fast enough. But on the other hand, I think you're right. I think Pletcher is moving this horse forward at the right time. I do think there'll be pace in this race, which I think only helps him. And I don't know of a jockey going any better, Matt, than Irod Ortiz Jr. right now, who will ride known agenda for trainer Todd Pletcher in the Kentucky Derby. Matt, the next horse I want you to tell me more about I want, please rock my world a little bit when you talk about the next horse on our list. Rock your world, Brian. Uh, I mentioned the three key characteristics of Derby winner, winners of late. Rock the world checks all three, like I said, with essential quality. 100 point race, undefeated as a three year old and likes to be up part of the pace. John Sadler made the move from turf to dirt in the Santa Anita Derby. And this horse was impressive, recording the top buyer speed figure of any horse in the field coming into the first Saturday in May. You rocked my world, Matt. I have very little left to say. I will say that John Sadler also moved from Umberto Rispoli to, Jose, uh, to uh, Joel Rosario for this one night. Can't blame him there and Rosario uh, has been on this horse before. I do worry a little bit. I know he's got the fastest buyer of anyone in the race. I know the Santa Anita Derby has been a hotbed for Kentucky Derby winners lately, although that's mostly Bob Baffert. Um, but Rock Your World has only run once on dirt, Matt, and it was pretty much a wire job there in the Santa Anita Derby. I do wonder if this inexperienced horse, very inexperienced on dirt, how he's going to react if uh, he gets some dirt in his face early on in this race. I don't know if he's going to get the lead and if he does go for the lead with, say, Cattle River in there, I think that's an issue. Still, with all the things you mentioned, he has to be a top contender. Yep, top contender for me. And let's face it, Brian, all of these horses in this field have questions that they got to deal with. That's true. You're right, Matt. I, I, I seem to jump on issues for certain horses more than other. But Rock Your World's lack of dirt experience and his maybe need for the lead do worry me a little bit. Matt, I know you love trainer Todd Pletcher. I know you love horses that come from New York. Tell me why Burbonic is going to win this year's Kentucky Derby. Um, I don't know if I can answer that question, uh, uh, Brian. As we know, 72 to 1, made the last move in the Wood Memorial to gobble up uh, uh, I don't gobble up, but just get by dynamic one at the wire. Uh, uh, long shot for a good reason in that race. Um, I can't pick every Todd Pletcher horse. I'm going to take a pass with Burbonic. Okay. I like the way he finishes races. I don't think he's beaten much of anything before the Wood Memorial. And I question what exactly he beat in the Wood Memorial. So I'm not heavy on Burbonic, but I could see him rallying up again. If I'm right, if the pace is solid, he's a threat to rally up again. Maybe he's this year's charismatic who popped in the Lexington before the Kentucky Derby. I don't know. He is a passport. Oh, I'll, I'll go pass on Burbonic too. I just don't think he's going to repeat that 72 to one. Medina Spirit, Matt, uh, could be the only one from trainer Bob Baffert. In fact, he's the only one from Bob Baffert we have on this 20 horse in right now list. 
He hasn't won in his last few. In fact, he's been well beaten in his last few. But on the other hand, I think he's pretty consistent, Matt. Look at those buyers. Pretty consistent, Brian. And look at his finishes, seconds, seconds, thirds um, in big races. Did win that uh, blanket finish in uh, uh, Robert B. Lewis earlier in the year. But yeah, you said it, Brian. Bob Baffert's only shot. No concert tour. No life is good. No Bezos. Go down the list. They're not here. Um, this is a much tougher race. Uh, frankly, uh, Brian, I'm going to go with what I believe. I say Medina Spirit is nowhere at the end of this race. I take a pass. Okay. I like him a little bit more than you. I have him as a board hitter, Matt. Um, some of those trends we've been talking about, Santa Anita Derby, close to the pace, Bob Baffert, uh, are in his favor. I think he's a horse that can not only stay close to the lead, but fight to the wire a little bit. He's not one of my top five or six for sure, but I think he is a threat to just stick around. And I'm going to say the exact same thing about the next horse on our list, Matt. That's Midnight Bourbon, Son of Tis Now, trained by Steve Asmussen. Hey, Brian, and I agree, but uh, uh, with the, the the similarity in the running the style of those two horses. But if I've got to pick uh, one of them to hang around and be a board hitter, it's going to be a midnight berm. It is going to be midnight bourbon. Bottom line, Brian, in this 20 horse field, we can't pick them all. We can't put them all in uh, uh, our trifectas and superfectas, unless of course we've got a, a, a big bankroll in our pockets because of that. Midnight Bourbon, board hitter, has been doing well. Second in that Louisiana Derby that I think we both like. Yeah, I do like the uh, Louisiana Derby. And it's uh, kind of surprising that trainer uh, Steve Asmussen has never won the Kentucky Derby. Tis now as a sire, I like to go distances. Mike Smith, of course, you can't have a better big name rider than that. And, and Matt, frankly, I like Midnight Bourbon. I wasn't talking about the horse there, folks, but... The horse itself seems to be a nice horse. Again, he's not one of my top horses, but I think he is a potential board hitter. And Matt, I am going to throw a bunch, a number of these horses, because I think that's the kind of race it is to be lower on those uh, trifectas and superfectas. The next horse on my list, Matt, may be the most perplexing horse on the list to me. His name is Mandaloon. He's a son of Into Mischief, trained by Brad Cox. Yes, Brian, and I think you're referring to the fact that... Uh... He did some good things on the Derby Trail down in Louisiana, which headed him into the Louisiana Derby as the favorite. But quite frankly, Brian, his sixth place performance in that race is pretty hard for me to overlook. Yeah, and, and you know, I remember, again, I go way too far back, folks, I, I, I apologize, but I remember Thunder Gulch kind of throwing in a clunker in the bluegrass, and all of a sudden, he's 24 to 1 or something in the Kentucky Derby, and he wins it. So, you know, I'm not one to just say one race is the end of a horse being a potentially very good horse. I think this is a potentially very good horse. He's a good looking horse. He's looked good here in the mornings at Churchill Downs. If you draw a line through that race, uh, you certainly could consider Mandaloon a whole lot more for this race. So I'm going to put him in as a board hitter just because I think that Louisiana Derby might be just one of those things. Hey, folks, I am loving, I should say this to Matt more than anyone, I am loving these graphics with these factoids put up by our friend and producer, Tony Bada Bing. How about you? Absolutely. That's a lot of work by Tony. And hey, folks, as you're watching, there's so many good facts on them. If you see something you want to jot down, just pause for a second and take some notes and then jump right back into the show. You're allowed to pause, but you're not allowed to fast forward through anything that Matt Schiffman is saying. That's our rule. OK, Matt, the next one on our list is Cattle River. I think they learned something. Uh, from the Rebel into the Arkansas Derby, I learned that you don't want to pull this horse back at all. You don't want to hold him back at all. He got a little rank trying to be just taken off of concert tours pace in the Rebel. They let him roll a little bit more in the Arkansas Derby, and it was an improvement. It was an improvement, Brian. He got uh, second place in, the, in that race, but now here we go. Um, we're going to go 10 furlongs. Cotto River couldn't handle the distance in the Arkansas Derby. Some people are saying he's going to get loose on the lead in the Derby. I don't agree with that. Whether uh, someone's head-to-head -head with him in there, he's going to feel the pressure of a lot of horses 
that want to be part of the pace. I don't like him in here. He's going to be prominent. I don't like him. Take a pass. Yeah, another one trained by Brad Cox, Matt. And uh, I love the uh, I, I love the ownership deciding to give it a shot. This is a horse who has a big win at Churchill Downs. His owners have been around a long time. I do think if it's a sloppy track, I'm not seeing it right now from the weather forecast. It looks like we might get away with a fast track. But if it's a sloppy track, I think his chances go up. But for now, I'm going to call him a pass. But I think he is the most likely horse to set a fast pace, be on the lead in the Kentucky Derby. Highly motivated is next on our list, Matt. I, I worry that the son of Into Mischief is not a true 10 furlong horse. How about you? Yeah, I, I worry about that a little bit also. But I mean, his performance at, uh, in the bluegrass where he battled to the wire with the Kentucky Derby favorite essential quality is definitely a feather in his cap. Chad Brown looking for his der first derby win. Jockey Javier Castellano looking for his first derby win in here. Um, I'm going to call him a possible board hitter. Yeah, those are some really good connections who have yet to connect in the Kentucky Derby. So watch out. Uh, despite what I said about the distance, I think it's possible he is one of the most talented horses in the race. And he might be getting better. He might still move forward off that Bluegrass's second race of the year. He's a board hitter for me, but uh, I'm going to hold off calling him a top contender as probably one of five or six that are under 10 to one in this year's Kentucky Derby. Next on the list, Matt, a bunch of people are telling me, don't sleep on helium. You got to like helium. Let helium rise to the top of your board. I'm just not seeing it for the son of Ironicus, Matt. Well, Brian, and you know, and if you, you, you take helium too much, you're going to end up sounding like Donald Duck by the time we get to uh, our next show. Anyway, it, it's helium, the surprise winner of the Tampa Derby for Mark Cassie who is zero for eight in the Kentucky Derby with no horses to hit the board. I don't know if that's why uh, uh, Cassie said after the Tampa Derby, I'm going to change it up and we're going to train up to the race. I'm not sure. Um, he is a horse that comes off the pace. He's going to get the right setup, going to have the odds. Um, I'm going to call him a board hitter. You're going to call him a board hitter. I'm going to call him a take a pass, Matt. There's just too much I don't like here. He's only run three times. He's only run once on dirt. That sounds familiar, just like Rock Your World. Uh, yeah, Cassie had a shot with War of Will maybe a few years ago, but he had some trouble in the race. This one, I, I, Ironicus, was better at middle distances. One race this year, I, I'm just not on his bandwagon. Actually, of the two Cassies that have only run three times, Matt, the horse who's next on our list is Soup and Sandwich. Maybe I am uh, beguiled just a little bit by his good looks, his stunning good looks, but I like him better than Helium. The son of Into Mischief has made all three starts this year. It comes out of a pretty good second in the Florida Derby. Yeah, I agree, Brian. A nice second uh, in the Florida Derby. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I think if I have to put Soup and Sandwich and Helium next to each other and pick the one that is maybe going to be the better horse, it would be soup and sandwich. But Brian, it's just the pace scenario that bothers me about soup and sandwich. Another one that has shown that they like to be up near the lead, on the lead, close to the lead, where there's going to be a pack of horses. That concerns me. Um, I can't play them all. I'm going to take a pass on soup and sandwich. Yeah, I, I, I hear you, Matt. I don't like the pace scenario definitely for soup and sandwich as well. But on the other hand, I think this horse has the potential to be really good. I want to give Tyler Gaffalione another shot in here. At least soup and sandwich has passed horses on dirt, which a few others can't say. So I'm going to call him a board hitter, throw him in there, sprinkle him in, a little soup and sandwich on the bottom of my menu. Dynamic one, Matt. Uh, you've been trying to talk me on this horse of Union Rex for a while now, another Todd Pletcher runner. Tell me why you like him. I like him because I know the connections, the ownership group and Todd, Todd Pletcher were very, very high on dynamic one going into the Wood Memorial as a horse that is developing late. He ran really well in the Wood Memorial, maybe one or two strides uh, 
uh, late would have made him the winner of the wood. I think this is another horse that's going to be at the top of his condition, moving ahead. Um, I give him a good chance, and I'm actually even going to call him a top contender, Brian. Wow, that's a long shot top contender from Matt Schiffman. Dynamic one, here's what I don't like about him. I said known agenda might not be fast enough to win this Kentucky Derby. I really don't know if dynamic one is fast enough. I also uh, wonder, because it looks like he's made a nice middle move and then kind of flattened out late in a few of his races where he's either gotten to the lead or made a move and then didn't have it the last furlong. That makes me worry just a little bit. But I like, I like what you said, too. He, he looks like a horse who could handle 10 furlongs. He looks like a horse who's getting better. I love those Phipps bloodlines he has running through his system. Uh, Jose Ortiz, nothing wrong with the rider. So for me, he's an interesting long shot. He's a board hitter for me. Another Pletcher's next, Matt. That's Sainthood. Misha Wish is his uh, uh, sire. We haven't seen a lot from this young sire yet, but Sainthood is another in the field who's only had three lifetime starts. That's right, Brian. And this, this uh, horse did not get a good trip in the Jeff Ruby stakes, keeping in mind that he broke his maiden on the dirt. So we know he likes the dirt. His second place performance uh, at Turf Play was not a synthetic uh, freak job. He got shut down at the top of the stretch when he was starting to make his move. But boy, he got back into gear again to finish second. Sainthood, for me, is a board hitter at a very big price. Yeah, he's going to be a long shot in here, uh, even though he's trained by Todd Pletcher. Um, hey, let's say this. His, his performance in the Ruby Stakes, Matt, uh, was well done. But um bump. Okay, no one, yeah, no one laughed at that one. I I I feel you, people. That was pretty bad. Anyway, St. Hood only ran in two maiden races on the dirt. They were both decent performances, uh, but they were maiden races. And I, I don't see any horses in those maiden races who have come out and 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 done big things since. And you know, I really talked down like the king several horses ago, Matt. So I really, really think that this is a big jump up in class for St. Hood. For that reason, I don't like them. But on the other hand, he's a horse who could be getting good quick. I think he might end up being a turf or synthetic horse more so than dirt. I'm going to call him a board hitter just because I loved what he did in the Ruby Stakes. He made up so much ground after all that trouble. But he's kind of borderline board hitter for me, Matt. Hidden Stash, another horse who likes to rally. A son of Constitution is next on our list, Matt. Vicky Oliver is due for a stakes win, says my producer, Tony Bada Bang. That's right, Brian, and uh, uh, Hidden Stash was one of those horses that uh, was consistent on the Derby Trail, getting a second, getting a third, then finishing fourth in the Bluegrass, which was maybe a little bit uh, disappointing, but this is a horse that likes to come from behind, and that's not always easy to do at Keeneland, but again, another one that's going to get the right pace scenario at a very big price that's the kind I like to use as a board hitter. Okay. Yeah, he's going to be a take it pass for me just because he's had his chances. I don't like the Tampa Bay form. I don't think it's held up well and hidden stash is part of that because his bluegrass, let's face it, he was fourth, but he was beating a full 10 lengths in there. I just think he's a cut below. I'd like to see Vicki Oliver do well. She's uh, she's stable at Churchill Downs, but I just think this horse is a cut below and has less upside than some of the others we just talked about who could rally. Next on the list is Dream Shake, Matt. And I'm going to say it again, this son of Twirling Candy has only had three lifetime races. Seems like, I guess, Brian, we're going to have to stop saying only because that's getting to be the standard uh, 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 pre preparation for horses in uh, Derby as of late. Two third place performances. I think uh, Dream Shake um, burst onto the scene as the horse that beat Bezos, that uh, hugely hyped Bob Baffert horse. But uh, since then, eh, I'm going to take a pass. Yeah, well, I liked Medina's spirit better than you do. So it makes a, a sense that you take a pass on the horse that really Medina Spirit beat off late in both of the last two races. So if Medina Spirit's beating him off in the last two races, how can I like him here? I'm going to take a pass as well, Matt. The next horse on the list, another long shot. His name is Obesis. He's a son of Orb who won the Kentucky Derby eight years ago. And it's for another trainer, 
uh, maybe not nationally known so much, but stable at Churchill Downs. That's Greg Foley. I'm talking about Obesis, Matt. What do you like about him? And uh, and a low profile jockey uh, in the race uh, in Marcelino Pedroza. Um, what do I like about Obesis? He's a horse that has shown improvement in every race in his buyer speed figure, picked up a good, uh, good fig. Uh, for running third in the Louisiana Derby seems to be the wise guy horse at this point, Brian, in the field. Um, I have him as a board hitter. I think his odds to win are going to be way higher than his odds in the trifecta and superfecta. Yeah, although often those win odds often correlate at least a little bit, which is good news for people that think Obesis can rally into third or fourth. I think he could do even better than this. He'll be my last of the top contenders, actually, Matt. I love the way he finished in the, in the Louisiana Derby. And you know I like the Louisiana Derby. I like Hot Rod Charlie. To a point, I like Midnight Spirit. But I think Obesis probably one more jump, gets second in that race to Midnight Bourbon. I think he's moving forward quickly after sprinting the first three starts of his uh, career. And with the expected pace, He's kind of a smallish horse, but he can kind of weave through traffic a little bit. He's done that already in his races. Love the way he finished the Louisiana Derby. I love the way he worked this morning at Churchill Downs. I thought he looked really good. He's my top long shot. He's a top contender for me, Matt. Last horse on our list. If the field was ended today, number 20 would be get her number, Matt. Cleverly named, son of dialed in. It comes from trainer Peter Miller from California by way of Arkansas. That is true, Brian. Got 20 points, uh, 10 of them coming when he, uh, he ran fourth in the Arkansas Derby. Quite frankly, there's not much that I like about this horse. I'm going to take a pass. Yeah, he showed some interesting things as a two-year-old, but on the other hand, I don't love his races this year either. I guess he broke pretty poorly in the Arkansas Derby, but still he wasn't running any better than, say, Superstock, who we don't love. Uh, in that Arkansas Derby went fourth. So he's going to be a take a pass horse for me. That's it, folks. That's 20 horses right now. That's the field for the Kentucky Derby, Matt. That was fun, but we got other work to do. Let's talk about Latruska, Matt. You uh, you thought she had a better chance, I guess, because she was your top long shot, although she didn't end up being a true long shot. But what a race she ran to beat Monomoy Girl at Swiss Skydiver in that million-dollar apple blossom. Yeah, it was great to have uh, that matchup in the Apple Blossom. Uh, uh, kudos to those connections who were willing to throw it down early in the year. But hey, Latruska is a horse that uh, is doing really great things uh, since come, getting to race in America from uh, Mexico. Uh, um, she uh, was just so tough down the stretch, setting the pace. And then uh, coming down the stretch, Monomoy Girl close behind, making the move. It looked like Monomoy Girl was going to go right by another uh, convincing win. But Latruska dug right back in and got the win by a nose ahead. Uh, 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 congratulations. Um, and a fine effort by Monomoy Girl. A little bit of uh, uh, puzzling performance by Swiss Skydiver, however. Yeah, Latruska, first of all, she's a nice story. She's, she, her first six races came in Mexico City of all places. Her older brother was Trigger's Warning, who was a nice stakes horse several years ago and had an untimely passing. So there's a lot of, lot of reason to like this Latruska. On the other hand, Latruska had more racing. She was the horse that was a little bit, uh, I think, uh, battle tested this year. She had a tough race with she uh, dares the devil last time. And I think that helped in the bottom line. I also think she got about six pounds from Monomoy Girl. And I also think that this kind of show how good Irad Ortiz is going right now, Matt, because uh, uh, she did get a good ride in that race. Nothing against Monomoy Girl. She threw in another big race. It's, it's almost shocking to see her lose. This is the only the second time any horse has ever finished ahead of her. Uh, Swiss Skydiver never looked comfortable on the rail. I, I've been told it wasn't the place to be that day at Arkans uh, uh, Arkansas Derby Day. I'm sorry, Apple Blossom Day. Uh, she was uh, crowded a little bit as they straightened out, but still wasn't her best performance. She was only third best. I look for better things from her in the future. But all, uh, all credit goes to Latruska, a deserving winner 
against two champions in the Apple Blossom. Another deserving winner, Matt, is, was in the Oakland Handicap, which was the same day, another million-dollar race. And at one point in the stretch, it looked like we were about seven across the track here. And sure enough, the winner is a horse who now really likes to win. I wasn't sure if that was the case last year, but Silver State has become a winner, as evidenced, Matt, by his five consecutive wins. Five in a row, and this time, uh, uh, you know, this win was a legitimate win um, in the million-dollar Oaklawn handicap. Got a triple-digit buyer speed figure uh, uh, after the race, and uh, hey, congratulations! I'm sure the going is going to get tougher in the handicap division as the year goes on. Yeah, yeah. No one is calling him the best uh, older male in the country yet, but uh, maybe he's really close to being that, Matt. Trained by Steve Asmussen, the son of Hard Sponge just keeps getting better. He kind of uh, lost some time last year after maybe being a still developing commodity down there in Louisiana. He sure looks good now. That was a nice win for Silver State, which leads me, of course, to last week's picks, Matt. I don't really want to put this up, but Tony says we have to. I, I think uh, there were two races. I almost went, honestly, I almost picked Silver State over Express Train. I changed. I went with Express Train. I'm a loser. You're a bit of a winner, though, in the Apple Blossom. Yeah, I had the uh, long shot, you know, uh, with Latruska, but it was an upset victory uh, in the Apple Blossom. And in the Oakland Handicap, my top pick, Fearless, uh, finished second after not seeming to enjoy being down on the inside. Yeah, and Silver State, we should say, went off at surprisingly good odds in that Oakland handicap. I think he was about 92, Matt. Well, that's the show. We introduced the 20 horses. We're going to have a whole lot more, of course, on the Kentucky Derby, a little bit more on the Kentucky Oaks and our bets next week. So you have that to look forward to. But for now, let's get a parting shot from you, my friend. That's right, Brian. We got two shows next week, two big shows and we'll use a lot of the information we, uh, we gave you folks in our rundown of the field to zoom in a little bit more with our picks and our wagers. And of course, as you referenced earlier in this show, we want to thank our producer, Tony Bada Bing, for all the work he put in, all the time he spent on those beautiful graphics, folks, that you were seeing during the show. So thanks you very much, Tony. Kudos to Tony. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, folks, for watching every week. We also want to thank our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. As Matt said, folks, we have uh, draw analysis, we have pace projection, we have long shots, and we have suggested wagers all coming right here on Horse Center on Kentucky Derby Week. We look forward to seeing you then.